Hi, September 5th, Happy Dog Farm. I'm still working on the um, fermenter today. It's, it has to be done. Anyway, um, I combined two techniques in one step. A friend recommended that I heat the um, material to soften it and make it more compliant to the gasket, which frankly I think is a really good idea. Uh, I want to show you how I did it. It didn't come off perfectly, but I think it came off. So first thing I did was I did heat the um, that area surrounding the bulkhead connector. And what I did was I took two large heavy metal, um, we call them shoulder washers, uh, but you know, whatever. And I actually pressed in a smaller one there to help keep that in place. And I sandwiched very snugly that material so it was definitely under pressure to conform. And then slowly I heated it with my trusty heat gun until I saw melt occurring here and here. And I could see that it had closed up that gap some. You know, this was all a good sign. So I stopped applying heat. Now the downside is I didn't have a non-stick surface on the back side of my washer. Shame on me. I think even a food grade silicon grease would have helped me there. I didn't want to use aluminum foil because I didn't ever want that metal coming in contact with the juice, however remote the chance. But it did flatten that surface of minutia enough for the curve. Then the next thing I did um, I tried it and I had very small seep. I mean, I was close. So the next thing I did was or I removed it again. I didn't use the smaller um, gasket. I went straight to a large gasket with a large um, sanitary washer. And I completely potted it from this side with a food grade 100% silicon uh, room temperature vulcanizing RTV sealant. And then I've compressed it and sealed that puppy up, filling the voids as much as I possibly could. Now, this side, all of that stuff looks really, really good. However, you know, I got a little bit of gap shit going here. And I push in the gasket ceiling, and that kind of makes me happy. Um, I can always deal with something on the top a little later but I have a good seal at the shoulder I have a seal back here and I'm not going to put it under pressure for 24 hours which is the recommended cure time and just because I'm paranoid I'm actually going to put Teflon tape on the threads for the spigot so that's today's update for September 5th bottom line I don't recommend you put a tap down there. If you're going to put a tap in the curve, you know, in the cone, put it high. Put it up here where you don't have quite the change in X and change in Y, those two varying radiuses. Yeah, I got away with it over there, but I think the reason I got away with it over here is frankly because I installed it on a side that had already been flattened um, by design. That was the manufacturer's um, water height markings. Um, you know, good idea, right? Yeah, good idea. However, not so good here. Um, I shot for that same sort of thing, but I went below the flat markings. So my suggestion was, if you're going to put them in here someplace and you don't mind losing some of your markings, put them here. Um, sorry to my um, overseas friends, those are gallons, not liters. So this is a 60-gallon tank. If this is successful and I get a good press this year, you know, washes out, I'm probably going to buy two more of these tanks. Um, they're just affordable. They're simply affordable. Um, oh, someday I'd like to be into um, stainless steel, but not yet. I just don't have it. Um, the uh, 
what you don't know going on in the background is I'm trying to build a sanitary space in my barn with floor drains and dairy board and things like that. Ultimately, this venture would move into the barn. And if I could keep the space just warm enough in the winter, I would have full tanks running all winter long in an unheated space. Um, ideally, the heat of fermenting would be offset by the chill of the room and a nice slow ferment would be good. Well, that's all for now. Uh, wish me luck. 24 hours, huh? Gotta wait. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.